What's up, YouTubers? Justin Fuller here. Today, I'm outside of a 2022 Honda Passport. So if you're thinking you wanted something a little bit bigger than a CRV, but a little bit more rugged than a Pilot, this might be the vehicle for you. So we're gonna talk about the trims above it and below it, and how it stacks up to the competition that isn't a Honda. Let's check it out. So one of the first things we should probably do is talk about what's underneath the hood of this vehicle. So let me pull you on in here and let's talk about it. So as we pull on in, I'll point out that it's a 3.5 liter V6 engine. This is putting out 280 horsepower. Now you've got a nice clean display as you can see here, which can be a good thing or a bad thing because depending on what you need to get to, you might have to remove a lot of plastic. But I've got my fuse box sitting right here as we come across windshield wiper fluids. Of course, my engine is covered right here. My air box lives right here and then my batteries. My battery is deep down under here. So if you need to jump your car or another vehicle, you have to take the air box off to do it with this rubber grommet. Now moving across, you've got your CPU sitting right here. So not as easy to access, but you do have some extra space in case you wanna run lines for additional lights in the car, amplifiers, subs, anything that you might need to run those auxiliary lights, you do have that ability to do. Now, while we're talking about horsepower in this vehicle, we should probably talk about a comparison of how this vehicle stacks up to others on the market. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and throw that up on the screen so you can see the horsepower comparison. This one obviously getting 280 horsepower and then some competitors out there in the market. Uh, now, if we're looking at the Honda above it and below it as far as trim levels, they're gonna have the exact same engine and transmission. So just be aware of that. All right, guys, so while we're at the front of this vehicle, we should probably talk about what kind of miles per gallon this vehicle is getting. So this Passport is getting 20 in the city and 25 on the highway. Now, if you were looking for better gas mileage, you'd probably want to drop down to something like a CRV where you can get a little bit better gas mileage. I'll throw that up on the screen. But if you were looking at this vehicle, all of the trim levels are going to be that 20 to 25 unless you're looking at an all-wheel drive model. And then I believe it differs by about a mile per gallon. But Let's talk about what else is out there in the market and how they stack up. So if you were looking at other vehicles on the market, I'm gonna throw something up on the screen so you can understand how this car stacks up to those vehicles. After we looked at that, let's keep on moving around the car. All right guys, so before we do the full walk around of this car, I wanna talk to you about the trim levels that are above it and below it. So if you're going above this touring model, the only model above it is gonna be that elite trim level, right? So top of the line. So the first thing I wanna do is show you what am I gonna gain if I jump up to that model? And then of course, hey, how much extra is it gonna cost me? Now, after we've looked at that, I wanna to talk to you about dropping from the touring model down to the EXL model. So if I wanna do that, how much money am I gonna save? And of course, what extra amenities am I giving up? So take a look at that, and then after we've done that, we'll do the walk around of the car. All right, guys, so let's talk about the profile of this vehicle. The first thing I want to point out is, of course, you can see that you have 20-inch alloy wheels that are going to be a painted gray. They match up great with this graphite gray finish that you're looking at right here. Now, up top of the car, you do, of course, come with these black roof rails that are standard on the vehicle. And then as we move down, you'll notice that you do have a spoiler with integrated tail light inside of it. Now, as we're moving around the side of this, I do want to point out that you do, of course, have six airbags in the car. So two front, two side, and then two full curtain airbags. Now, this car is set up with the breakaway mirrors and turn indicators, right? So they are powered. And not only that, they will fold up. So you do have a button to actually uh, automatically fold in. So if you need to pull it into a tight space, know that you have that available to you. Now, as we wrap around the front, you do have the full LED setup. So LED daytime running lights, your headlights, and then down below, you do have your fog lights. Now, coming across, you, of course, got your grill set up. Uh, so I've got the slats running underneath, kind of a honeycomb finish, my emblem, and then I've got a black brow coming up onto this gray hood. Now, the car does have Honda sensing, so up top, you'll see this little trapezoid cut out right there. And then down below, you're gonna find the radar that lives inside of the grill, typically right behind the Honda emblem. Now, outside of here, you'll see these small circles cut out. And this is gonna be on the front and the back of the car because the car does have parking sensors built in. Now, I mentioned Honda sensing. If you're not familiar with that, what that is is a couple different features. The first being a collision mitigation braking system, meaning if it's looking like I'm gonna hit another car, it'll actually first alert me and then apply the brakes to help prevent the accident. Now, an additional feature that the car has is called lane keep assist. So if I set it, it's gonna use radar to detect the lines down on the road. And that way, if I start to drift a little bit to the left or right, it'll keep me centered. Now, on top of that, they got something for the shoulder of the road. So road departure mitigation is set up to where if I start to drift off the shoulder of the road, it'll give me an audible alert and shake the wheel and say, hey, wake up, pay attention. So some cool features that the car offers uh, to help keep you and your passengers safe. Now, as we wrap around, I'll point out that it does have keyless entry, meaning I can walk up and put my hand on the door handles. It'll automatically unlock for me. Uh, and of course, I can lock it off the round button right here. 
as we move to the back of the vehicle. I'll point out that you have the privacy tint on the back half standard from the manufacturer. Of course, I pointed out you do have the rear indicator right here. You can see your fish lens up there, excuse me, your shark tail, I should say, or shark fin. Uh, and then of course my windshield wiper blades here. I do have a um, back of camera located right there, parking sensors on the back, and then I do have a dual chromed exhaust here. Now in the touring model, you'll see this big enormous sticker right here, meaning that I have the ability to throw my foot underneath it and be able to pop this open. So if you were looking for this, this is where this is gonna live. All right guys, so one of the coolest things about this vehicle is that it's much like a pilot in the sense that it's got a lot of space, but what they've done back here is they've removed that third row. So I've got a lot of cargo space. First, I've got my carpet floor mats, which come standard with the vehicle, so just be aware of that. But what they've done here is essentially remove that third row that would typically live in a pilot, right? Where it might end right about here. Now you've got all this additional space. Now, of course, underneath I can pop this up and I've got additional storage right here. And then if I go one more, this is where my spare is gonna live. Now, what I really like about this is that you've got this additional storage space over here. It's a great place to store like a sub, an amp. You could do a lot of things if you remove the plastic in the back here uh, and, and make some different options available to yourself, right? So just be aware that you've got a lot of cargo space in the back here. And then of course, one of my favorites, this funnel right here. So if you're looking at this vehicle, we should probably talk about a comparison as far as cargo space goes. So I'm gonna throw a comparison up so you can understand how this car stacks up with other vehicles out there on the market. So take a look at that and then we'll talk about, hey, if I fold this second row down, how much additional space am I gonna get? And then how does that stack up out there in the market? So that you can understand, hey, if I need total cargo space because I'm taking a big trip or whatever it may be, how much space am I really working with in comparison to other you know, competitors out there in the market? So I briefly touched on this funnel earlier and maybe you can see me, maybe you can't, but I wanna explain what it is. It's not a telescope, it's not a kaleidoscope. Let's talk about how this thing works. So if I come around to the side over here, I'll point out that you have your gas set right here, right? It's not connected to the door locks. I don't know why, Honda has that for a lot of cars, but if you need to access it, you just come in here and in the door, it lives right here. But coming back to this, if I ran out of gas, I would need to be able to hold this piece open because it is capless to get gas into the vehicle. That is where this tiny kaleidoscope comes into play. I could put this down in there, it'll hold it open, and now I could let gas into there if I had, you know, a milk carton, if I had a water jug, you know, whatever I may be using to fill the carpet gas uh, so I can hold that valve open. So if you're wondering what this is, that's how this works. All right, guys, so here we are in the second row of this vehicle. So I want to talk about leg space because I want you to understand, hey, what are you really working with? If you're going to have passengers back here, can they really fit? Right, so I had the front seat set up for myself and this is what kind of room I have behind me. So I've got plenty of room and I'm at six foot and I'm about 235, so I'm not the littlest of dudes, uh, but I've got quite a bit of space back here to work with. Now, in the touring model, you will see that it is a leather interior and it is perforated down the middle. So let me pull you on in and kind of show you what that looks like. So depending on the exterior color of the car, you are gonna have a couple options here. And then in the center, I do have a flip down with cup holders here. Now, over on the side, I will point out that you do have sunshade. So if you got little ones that are gonna be in the car, know that you can help them out. Out there now additionally you do have it more cup holders over here and then additional storage down here which you can fit a smaller water bottle in there just here where now in the back you of course have you know your typical and it's on both sides they didn't cheat you here like in some honda so be aware of that you've got it and then as you come down you do have control over the ac and in the back you can turn on your heated seats so know that you have them available to you if you live in a colder climate area and then you do have air vents back here as well so i do have an ac control from the back one from the front and then it is dual climate control front, right? So know that I've got three different climate zones running in this car. And then down below, I do have a 115 volt outlet uh, that lives right here. And then two USBs that are 2.5 amps, meaning that if I want to charge something, I will absolutely have the ability to do that. So now that we've seen what this second row can look like, I wanna throw a comparison up on the screen so that you can understand how the leg space in the second row compares to other vehicles out there on the market. So I want you to take a look at that comparison, understand where this car stacks up, uh, and then of course, We'll move on to the front row. All right, guys, so as we move into the front seat of this car, I wanna to talk to you about some things. So as I hop on in, I will point out that, of course, you do have a 10-way powered seat here, meaning that I can control up, down, left, right, front, back, left, right, not left, right, ignore that, but I do have lower lumbar support. Now, moving over to the passenger side, it's just gonna be a four-way powered, meaning I can control you know, back and forth and then my backrest right here. Now I will point out once again, you do have that perforated leather, so you can check that out and see what it looks like. Of course, you do have armrests living right here. And then as we come across to the side, you'll see it's black right here. I kind of wish they would have done black here anywhere an elbow lives. I typically like to see darker colors, that way it prevents that dirt from showing in that wear. Uh, and then you've got two different plastic tones that you can see as you come across, and then some additional storage down below. All right guys, so before we flip around and start talking about the dash layout and everything that's in front of me, I want to talk to you about leg space and of course a comparison, right? 
So I've got quite a bit of leg space in the front and in the second row of this car. So I want you to understand what kind of leg space this has compared to other vehicles out there in the market. So I'm gonna throw that up on the screen so that you can check that out. Now, while that's up there, I will remind you that of course this car does have memory seating in the vehicle as well. Uh, so I've got the 10-way powered seat, the four-way powered over here, and then the memory seating that I can set up depending on which key fob is getting into the car. So know that you have that available to you. So hopefully you got a chance to see that up on the screen as far as a comparison. So let's talk about the dash layout and then of course the touch screen. So as we come across the dash, I'm gonna start you on the left side and kind of explain buttons and knobs and features. So we're gonna start right down here where a very important set of buttons and features are. So the first being your parking sensors, right? Being living on the front and back of the car. So when I throw the car in reverse, if I'm backing up to something, it'll give me those audible alerts to let me know how close I'm getting. Now, next to that is gonna be some of those Honda sensing features I mentioned earlier. So the first being collision mitigation braking, that's this one right here. This is always on and running unless I press and hold to turn it off and you'll get an audible alert and it'll give you that warning letting you know you've now turned this feature off. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back on. Now what that is, is in the event that you are looking like you're gonna hit another car from, uh, you're gonna rear end them, right? It'll give you an audible alert, then it'll flash in the dash and it'll actually start to apply the brakes to help prevent you from hitting that car out in front of you. So that's how collision mitigation braking works. Now, below that is gonna be a road departure mitigation system, right? So this is the one where I mentioned if you're starting to drive off the shoulder of the road, it'll give you an audible alert and actually shake the wheel to say, hey, wake up, pay attention, it's looking like you're gonna rear end another car. So that is rear right here. Now next to that is vehicle stability assist. This works with your traction control, so in the event that you go into a skid, it'll transfer power to whichever wheel is getting better traction to help prevent uh, you from continuing to skid. Now above that, I've got a couple features here. Of course, I've got my econ button. Whenever I engage this, you're gonna see a green leaf come on, so it'll appear right down over there. And what this is gonna do is improve gas mileage. So right now I'm getting 20 in the city and 25 on the highway, so I can engage this to help improve my gas mileage. But when I do so, it is gonna affect some electrical system, shutting some down and limiting some. One being the AC, it won't blow quite as hard. And then two, your accelerator down there if you smash it to the floor you won't take off and go quite as fast so you're probably not going to get the full potential of that 280 horsepower that the car offers but improving gas mileage so great for long trips right now next this is going to be my uh my mirror controls so of course i have my left and my right as far as adjusting them on the pad and then as i mentioned this is powered so i can press this button and of course fold my mirrors in. Uh, so while we're talking about mirrors, I will point that this car does have a blind spot monitoring system that lives right here. So if somebody lands in my blind spot, this will light up. If I start to get over, it will give me an audible alert to let me know that they are there. Now, as I mentioned earlier, do of course have memory seating. So all I would have to do is get in, you know, press my set, it'll start to flash adjust and then press one to set seat one to whatever my uh, specific adjustments are. And then down below, of course, I've got my gas, my uh, popping the tailgate. And then of course, down there, I've got my hood release. And then I've got a kick pedal as far as my emergency brake in the vehicle. Now, as we come across, let's talk about the steering wheel of this vehicle. So not entirely awful. I, I hate it when you get in a car, and there's like a thousand buttons on here. That's just a lot to really understand and be feeling around for. Uh, so this one's not too bad. Uh, right here, I've got my Bluetooth control. So to answer a call, hang up and use voice command. And the voice command will work with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which I actually have my phone connected up to Android Auto right now. So I could press and hold this and then hear the, uh, the beep for me. It'd be for Google and say, okay, Google, and then ask it to do something. If you're Siri, uh, you'd hear the beep for your Siri and ask Siri to do something. Right now, if I hit my home button, it's gonna pull up the menu screen right here. So I just wanna walk you through that menu screen real quick. Uh, of course, I can pull up my trip computer, my phone, my navigation will give me my turn-by-turn -turn direction right here. And it also has a compass. So if you're one of those people who's searching for a compass, no, it exists there. Now, as I continue down, now playing any audio, uh, audio that I have running. So I think it pulled up something off my Spotify playlist. So there you go. Uh, and then as I back up maintenance, so this would be like oil life and tire pressure. Tire pressure, I love that they show you on each individual tire. So you don't have to wander around with your gauge uh, trying to figure it out. So it's kind of cool. And then of course your oil life, uh, when you get down to 15%, it'll give you an audible alert uh, and, and, a, and a visual alert. And then it'll give you a code letting you know uh, that you can Google it or you can look in your manual and it'll tell you exactly what they're gonna recommend to you when you get into the dealership. So if you wanna hide any of these different apps or excuse me any of these options you absolutely can do that so that was right up at the front i could go to show and hide come down here and go you know what i don't really need to see whatever this you know like yeah i don't need to see something well i can't do that one because it's locked right but any of these ones above it i can right so if i didn't want it because i just don't use it i could turn them off so you can see where somebody's already turned some of these ones off so i'll turn these additionally back on because not everybody needs to see these if you don't use am then you probably don't need to have it and if you never use your aux import you probably don't need that either right so a lot of different options that you can turn on and off here so just be aware of that all right so 
as we continue down through this, I'll just point out some of those things that we just turned back on. Android Auto, of course, Sirius XM comes with it for 90 days, and then it's up to you if you want to continue it. Apple CarPlay, of course, you have a uh, USB. The car does have, uh, a, of course, a USB that lives right there. You saw the two in the back, uh, and then I do have auxiliary imports inside of here as well. So just be aware of that. Now, as we keep going down here, uh, the aux input, you saw AM, FM, of course, uh, my Bluetooth audio, and then it, it, it can actually store music to this. So if you plugged into this thumb drive right here, right? I took a thumb drive, plugged it in, I could store music to the car. I wanna see you have a couple gigs, so it's not huge, uh, but it is something that you can use if you have some favorites you just wanna leave on the car uh, in case you, you get out of range and you can't pick up any music, uh, whether it's you know via your phone, uh, via your, yeah, XM or whatever it may be. So that's kind of this side. Now behind there, I will point out that you'll see this minus symbol. This car does have paddle shifters, so I can upshift and downshift out of that nine speed transmission uh, on my own. So it's gonna be a little bit more control over the performance of the vehicle. Now on the other side over here, I have what's gonna be my cruise control and my Honda sensing additional features here. So if I press this main button, you're gonna see ACC and LKS appear up here. And that stands for Adapter Cruise Control and Lane Keep Assist. So let's talk about those two features. I briefly mentioned them earlier. Lane Keep Assist uses this one, and this is one where if you press it, you're gonna see some dotted lines appear on here, and it's gonna use that camera to detect the lines out there on the road. So this way, once it picks them up when you're going over 45, if I drift a little bit to the left or the right, it'll keep me centered in my lane. So that way, if I got distracted, my coffee spilled or something, or you know, I, I just am not paying attention, it'll keep me centered so I don't drift into the next lane next to me. So not that I would say this is aimed at people who text and drive, but it kind of fits the mold. Uh, now, the other one is gonna be related to cruise control, and that's adaptive cruise control. So once I get up to speed, I can press set. From here, it would then be holding my speed, where it says ACC off, it would slow my speed. And then from there, I can select the distance it'll keep between me and a car in front of me by pressing this button. And you'll see, the more boxes, the more space it keeps between us. Now, what I mean by that is that it's bouncing the radar off the car in front of me. So it's detecting how far that car is in front of me. So what it'll do is if I set it to 65 and a car slows down in front of me, it'll keep my designated spacing. When I get up from behind him, it'll take me back up to my speed. So really cool for long road trips, or if your commute is just a long way to work. Right, so that's adaptive cruise control. If I want to flip over, which is a classic, press and hold, cruise mode selected. Now I can switch between the two, right? So just know that. Now, of course, I have my auto auto headlights, my fog light controls right here, and then on the other side, my windshield wiper controls pulled down for the front, and the back is controlled off the tip of the stock. So let's talk about the touchscreen. All right, guys, so here we are on the touch screen of the vehicle. So I just wanna show you kind of the quick breakdown of how this works. Now, the first thing I'll point out is that you've got a lot of different buttons and things going on here, but know that you can customize them. So if I press and hold, it'll pull this screen up right here and I can start moving stuff around. So when you find yourself only using three or four of these, know that you can come through here and you can remove them, you can add them, and of course, place things where you want. So just a quick tip or trick so that you know that you can do it, right? So I'm gonna start you all the way up here and just start right down the line. So Bluetooth audio, I've already connected up my vehicle uh, via Bluetooth. Bluetooth, uh, so I would just have to connect to the device and then maybe select my device. Once I've done so, then I can obviously pick it right. So you can see what I can do right here. So very easy to access your audio off of any device. Now next is gonna be my phone. So as far as accessing this, I could come in here and think, look at things like my contacts, look at my favorites and all those kind of different options that I have available to you. Now the next one is gonna be my settings. A lot of fun things that you can play with here in settings. So I'm gonna come back to this one, right? now. Over here, FM, just briefly gonna to touch on this, and FM and AM are gonna be the same. You have your access here to seek tune, and of course, know that you do have HD stations, so you can jump into those if you want to. Now, as we move across navigation, this one's brought to you by Garmin. Of course, you have access to all the uh, the applications via Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so if you wanna use Google Maps or Waze, Apple Maps, anything like that, or a TomTom -Tom, uh, app, know that you can do that as well. This is just a built-in one that's offered. So, not bad, it's Garmin, they know what they're doing, but you know, a lot of us prefer what we know, which is probably gonna be Google Maps. Now, as we move across Android Auto, is what I use. If you're an Apple CarPlay user, you could put that right there as well. So you can see that my Google Maps is pulled up. I have Spotify here, and then I have access to a lot of different apps that I can uh, take advantage of, right? So whether it be YouTube Music, uh, Game Snack, whether it be my calendar, right? Whether it be accessing my messages, my, my messenger for Facebook, right? Jumping into even things like Teams, right? So there are a lot of different options that you have available to you, and this is forever updating, so just be aware of that. <clears throat> While I could throw a list up today of some of the most popular apps, I guarantee in a month it'll probably be a different list, right? But know that, right? You can always Google it and check it out. So that is how Android Auto and Apple CarPlay works. It's tethering via your phone. Know that in this car, you do have to connect up via the USB. They did not make it wireless, which is kind of a letdown. I would have liked to see that, especially in a touring model when I'm paying roughly around 40 grand for the vehicle. Now, as we move across here, my trip computer, obviously easy to access and see current previous trips, trip A, trip B, things of that nature. So just so you know what that is and where you can access it. My SMS text function to read text aloud to me. 90 days of Sirius satellite comes with the car. My USBs, as I mentioned earlier, you could plug one in and store music uh, either to the car or leave that USB plugged in and be able to access the USB and all the music on it. I do have that auxiliary input, which I believe that three and a half uh, millimeter jack 
uh, that you can access, of course, you know, the old school aux cord. Uh, social playlist is cool. You will need to download an app, but having it, it gives the ability of everyone in the car to add songs to a playlist together. Uh, so kind of cool, uh, but be aware, one, you all got to download the app and you'll have to be on the hotspot together to, to access this function. So just kind of cool that you can take advantage of that if you do take a long trip. AM, FM, we talked about both those earlier. I don't think I need much on that. And then system updates, I think you understand that. As far as the hotspot, uh, they give it to you for 90 days free through at and Then I want to say after that, it's roughly $10 a month month. Uh, so not hard to do. All you got to do is hit the power button to turn it on and then use it, right? So know that you will have a free setup to take advantage of initially when you get the car. Uh, if you do have music stored to the car, that's where it'll live. Uh, obviously your clock and wallpaper that you can customize back here and you can set this to analog or digital. Uh, and then of course, lastly, you saw their Honda Link. So when you connect up to the car initially, one of the first free features it's going to show you is the event you get into an accident and the airbags deploy, Honda can call you. If you don't answer, they can send EMS out to your last known location. So they'll have your VIN. Uh, you know, the model make color of the car, and then of course the last, uh, you know, GPS location. So 100% free to take advantage of that. Additional features, depending on the trim level, when you start getting these tourings at Elites, you can do things like starting the car from your phone. Uh, they are subscription-based services, but you do get some of them for free for a period. Uh, and then things like, you know, controlling the door locks from your phone. So Honda Link. Now I wanna jump back over and talk about settings. There's a few different cool things in here. A lot of them live under vehicle, right? So when you come into here, this is where you can play with things like keyless access setup and, and different dings. But the door setup is probably gonna be the most commonly one that you wanna play with. Auto door lock, when you hit 10 miles an hour, it automatically locks the door in case you wanna change that. And then coming one more down when you're getting out of the car. When I open my driver's side door, it then unlocks the remaining uh, doors of the car. I like to change this personally to like when I shift the park because sometimes it takes the person in the driver's seat a long time to get all their stuff together and um, they're just sitting in the car and everyone else's doors are locked so they're kind of having to fiddle with the doors. Uh, so just two features that you can quickly play with on there. Uh, and, and there's a lot of different features that you can come in here and mess with, know that. Uh, but I just want to point out some basics so you know how to get to these, right? So lighting setup, if you want the lights to stay on for extended periods of time when you're walking up to your house, know that these are easy to get to. So that's just kind of your quick set as far as going through that. Now up top here, I'll point out you have some quick inputs, right? And of course you can change some of those too. Uh, earlier how I mentioned, if you press and hold, you can move some of these around and adjust and pick what they are. So know that you can take advantage of that as well. So since my phone's connected, it's gonna show me my phone life on there, what kind of service I'm getting and different things here. So know that you can see that as well uh, and be able to take advantage of that. And then of course you do have a volume knob, which is ever important in the world of Honda. I, I, whenever we don't have one, I see complain about it. And of course, if I wanna turn the audio off, it's as simple as pressing down on it. So that is the audio touchscreen. All right, guys, so living in the center stack, I just want to point out a couple quick features and we'll keep moving along here. So AC controls I mentioned are tri-zone, right? So I have a left and a right and then I can control the back separate well. Uh, so my, my vent, as far as fan speeds right here, but then my temperature is going to be here and then living here, right? So easy enough to understand. And if I want to jump over to the rear settings, I can control those. And I can, of course, lock them too if little hands are playing with buttons in the back. So know that you can take advantage of that, right? So easy enough to understand. Now, your heated seats for my driver and then of course my passenger side, living both right there. I've got that power outlet right here and that USB. And then I've got a nice rubber finish down here where my phone's living in my sunglasses so things don't slide around. A couple cup holders here. And then I'll point out that my shifter, a little bit different, not a classic shifter. So as I push through, you're gonna see it light up in the LEDs to let me know which one I'm in. I'll point out down here, of course you have snow uh, and normal. So as I toggle through these, you're gonna see a nice little display up here kind of give you some uh, some graphics to look at. Uh, so know that you have that. It'll adjust shifting points to help give you more traction. And then your idle stop start right here, right? So if I want it to, uh, this is always on and running unless I press and turn this off. And when you do, it'll see disengaged up here, right? So easy enough to understand. When I come to a stop at like a light, it can turn things off to help improve gas mileage. So that's what this is. Now I wanna go back to reverse here and just show you your backup camera. So if I pull that up, you've got three different views here. So I've got a wide angle, I've got normal. And then if I switch over one more, I've got one aimed straight down. So if I'm backing up, if I have a hitch on this, it's fantastic if you're if you're lining up to like a trailer because I can see exactly where I'm going. This is about six inches from your car. And then if you're parallel parking, you want them on the other side of this line up here. And you're gonna see those same two lines living in every single one of these screens. So just so you know. Now there's a button right here that's lit up and that's cross traffic monitoring. Meaning if somebody was coming from my left or right right now, it'd give me an audible and then show me arrows on the screen to let me know. So this way if I'm backing out in between two large vehicles and I can't quite see, I can still get that indicator because it does have sensors on the back corners of the car. So this is gonna be separate of those parking sensors that I mentioned. Now if I'm using the parking sensors as I get closer to things, you know, backing up. Uh, now with a curb, don't know that I'm gonna get it quite as much action going out as, but what I do like is that if I am backing up to a curb or garage or anything like that, I can switch over to this view and know exactly how close I'm getting. So really helpful. And this way, if I was getting to the garage, I could line things up perfectly for myself.
All right, guys, so we did it. We made it all the way through the exterior and interior of this vehicle. We talked about what's above it and what's below it. So we should probably revisit some of the comparisons that we did. So I'm gonna start you at the front of the vehicle, right? So this car, 3.5 liter V6 engine is getting 280 horsepower. So I wanna throw that comparison back up on the screen so you can understand how this car stacks up against other vehicles out there in the market. Now, after that, we talked about miles per gallon and what this car gets. This car gets 20 in the city and 25 on the highway. So I wanna throw a comparison back on the screen so that you can see what it stacks up as far as the comp competition out there in the market. Now, if you're looking for something Honda based and you want a better gas mileage, I would highly suggest looking at the CRV. While it is a little bit smaller, you are in a four cylinder turbo engine and you are going to get a lot better gas mileage. So know that you can take advantage of that. If you're looking for worse gas mileage, well then hell, I guess you could buy a Jeep Wrangler because they get terrible gas mileage. I know I own one. Um, so just throwing it out there right now. After that, we should probably talk about leg room. All right, so I'm gonna talk to you at the front and we'll just work our way back to cargo space. So in the front, I wanna throw up that comparison so you can understand what kind of leg space this has and how it stacks up to other vehicles out there in the market. So take a look at that. Now, after that, we should visit the second row. As I was sitting in the second row earlier, you saw even as a six footer, I had quite a bit of space behind the driver, being myself with the seat pushed back. So know that. So I wanna throw that leg space comparison up on the screen with other makes and models out there so you can understand how this car stacks up against its competition. Now, after that, we should talk about that lack of third row, what is now a lot of cars cargo space, right? If you're looking for a third row, I would highly recommend looking at the Pilot uh, because this is almost interchangeable, right? With the exception of underneath this car, uh, it is a little bit beefier as far as the suspension and it, it does sit a little bit higher, right? So if you're looking for a third row passenger vehicle, you probably want to look at the Passport, excuse me, the Pilot. If you're looking for something a little bit more rugged and extra cargo space because maybe you travel, uh, maybe you're just an outdoors person, you want to be able to throw stuff back there, this makes a lot more sense. So I'm going to throw that cargo space comparison up on the screen so that you can really understand how this car stacks up to others out there on the market. Now, after all that said, let's talk about the car and just kind of review it in general. Now, if you're looking at the 2021, not a whole lot of change here. Uh, so know that you could probably, if you can find one cheaper, might be something you want to take advantage of. Uh, so in the particular touring trim level, not a lot going on. If you're in the EXL, maybe there's some changes, maybe some pricing differences that you want to consider. So just something to keep your eye out there in case you're looking at the model below this as well. But I will say that if you were looking at a CRV and you found that it's just too small, you really would prefer a V6, then this car makes a lot of sense, especially if you don't need that third row in the very back. Now, if you're just thinking, well, if I can have it, why not? Well, then you could always jump up to that pilot, right? Know that you could do that, but you're giving up a little bit of ground clearance uh, and the, uh, the the rugged uh, pieces that they've added underneath the vehicle. So just something to keep in mind. Now, if I'm gonna have some knocks on this car, uh, it's gonna be some basic stuff. Things like, I would like to see wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto living in the car. I don't know why they haven't added them. Uh, things like, I don't know why the gas gauge isn't connected to the door locks where you can just press it and pop it open. It's in a lot of the cars, even the lower models, uh, that you know, cost around the 20,000 mark versus when we're at 40,000, right, on the car like this. Um, so just some different things. Now, this is a touring model and it, it is the two-wheel drive versus the all-wheel drive. So there is a price point difference there. I'd like to see all the Tourings and, and the Elite just be all-wheel drive, right? Just give it to me for the cost. Uh, but, you know, take advantage of it. If you don't need that all-wheel drive and you don't want to pay the extra, I think it's like 2,500 bucks or whatever it may be, uh, know that you can get a two-wheel drive model. Uh, outside of that, fantastic car offers a lot of cargo space. So if you're an active person, you can't fit in that little CRV, you want a little bit more power, you want a little bit more towing capacity, this makes a lot of sense. All right, guys, so with all of that said, I want to ask you for a couple quick favors. One, hit the like button. Let me know you like what I'm doing, right? I, I appreciate it. If you don't like it, leave me a comment because that's part two, right? Uh, if there's something you wish I would do or something you wish I'd add, or you just have a general question, right? Whether it's a question about the car, a question if you climb a model or drop a model, uh, whatever it may be, or hey, can you shoot a video on this? Can you explain this? Hey, I need help with this. Leave a comment. Let me know. Chances are I'll probably answer it. You can always shoot me an email or you can always even shoot me a text. I am available to help you out. So I hope that you'll leave a comment as well. Uh, now, after you've liked it and left a comment, I hope that you'll subscribe to the channel. Hopefully I'm giving you good content and this is something you want to continue to get from me, whether it be, you know, walkarounds and ex explanations of cars, whether it be just general how-tos, or whether it be tips and tricks videos that you can take advantage of if you already own this vehicle. And then lastly, there is a share button right down somewhere at the bottom of the screen. Press it, grab that link, drop it in a forum, drop it into a Facebook group that you're a part of. Let your friends see what I'm doing here. Maybe they want to, you know, look at a car. Maybe they want an explanation of something, right? I've got all kinds of videos that you can share with them. So I hope that you'll share my channel. Uh, of course it one does help me out as far as getting my name out there and then two hopefully it helps you and your friends out so that you don't have to watch an incredibly boring review instead you get me and this shirt explaining things talking way too quick other than that like the channel subscribe share all of the things and let it go